In this video, we will examine installing MongoDB on a Mac. In part one, we will examine downloading MongoDB, extracting to a folder, renaming the folder, creating the data folder, and then putting the binaries in the path. Before beginning the installation, it would be important to review the installation instructions on the MongoDB website. The easiest way to install would be using the Homebrew Package Manager. However, if you do not have Homebrew installed, the installation of Homebrew itself may be somewhat difficult. The instructions on how to install Homebrew are not part of this video. If you do have Homebrew installed, you would open a Homebrew terminal and then issue the following commands. Brew update followed by brew install MongoDB. You can access the Brew Terminal by opening up the Terminal application. The Terminal application can be launched by going to the Finder. From there, you can select Go, Applications. You would then look for Utilities. Under Utilities, there's an application called Terminal. You'll notice that we can now access Shell, select New Window, and from there you could select the Homebrew Shell assuming that you have this installed. From there, you can issue the commands mentioned on the installation instructions on the MongoDB website. Otherwise, we're looking at the manual installation. You can perform these operations from a terminal window. The first step is actually not necessary because you can simply go to the mongodb.org website and download the appropriate version. This will then be copied to your downloads folder. From there, you can then open a terminal window and proceed with the rest of the instructions. For the purposes of this video, we will consider the manual installation. First, we select Downloads. From the Downloads page, we select Mac OS X. This will then download the latest version of MongoDB. If you click on Quick Start, this takes you back to the installation directions. You'll notice that the download is in the form of a zipped tar file, which the default compression mechanism is unable to decompress. However, if we open up a terminal window, we can perform the appropriate commands from there. Let's go ahead now and run the unarchive command from the command line. We type in tar xvfz downloads slash and then the latest version of the download file, which was just downloaded. This will then unarchive the file including all of the necessary binaries. You'll notice, however, that the name of the folder created is very difficult to remember. Accordingly, it might not be a bad idea to rename this using the command mv. We can now type mv space, the name of the folder as created by the unarchive procedure, followed by an easily remembered name, mongodb. As you can see, the new folder has now been created. We're not quite done with the installation, however. There are two more considerations. Number one is we need to establish a path to the binary files. The main file which starts MongoDB is MongoD. If we type in the command MongoD right now, nothing will happen. As you can see, it simply says command not found. The reason for this is that the command is currently not in the path. The commands in which we are interested are located in the folder we just created subfolder bin. You'll notice the file mongod and also the mongo command which we'll need later on to test the mongodb shell. The most effective long-term approach would be to re-establish the path which is an environment variable which points to the system binaries. We can modify this by creating a file called dot bash underscore profile in your home folder. You can do this by executing the following command echo space export space path all uppercase equals dollar path again all uppercase colon followed by the path to the new folder you just created it must be the full path in this example it's slash users slash doug slash mongodb slash bin you then put in closing quotes a space a greater than sign followed by dot bash underscore profile. You then hit enter. If we now type in ls minus la, you'll notice that there's a new file called dot bash profile which has been created. We can view this file by typing in cat dot bash profile. 
and you can see that it has the command which includes the new path. If we now exit the terminal application and then restart, if we now type in MongoD, you'll notice the command is now available. However, this brings up the second consideration, and that is that we do not have a configuration file. One of the most important aspects of the configuration file is that we need to indicate where the DB path is located. Normally, the DB path would be off of the root of your hard drive under a folder called slash data slash DB. However, since we are running this as a specific user, it's better to indicate this directory under the current folder structure. Accordingly, first of all, we're going to have to make a folder which will house the data. So first we create the data folder, and then underneath that we create the DB folder. So we now have a folder in which we will house the data for MongoDB. We now need to indicate the DB path in a configuration file. It's also not a bad idea to indicate the log path so that we will have a log file which can be consulted later on. This concludes part one of installing MongoDB on a Mac. In part two, we will examine creating the mongod.com file, starting MongoD, testing, and then we will review the entire procedure.